Hi, this is Jesper Sandel from VelocityPeak.com and this is the second part of the tutorial where I show you how to do this. Let me play this one back. Okay, and the part that we're focusing on today is the explosion part. I'm gonna show you how to set up this type of explosion. It won't be exactly like this, but the principles are the same. And I'm using Cinema 4D and X Particles Explosion Effect to do this. And I rendered this with Cycles 4D. Um, you could of course adapt this to work with Redshift or Octane if you would prefer to do that. All the project files are available for download on velocitypeak.com. Okay, let's start. Okay, so this is where we left off the last time in the first part of the tutorial. We have this displaced plane with cubes on it. And we did that with the XP cloth and we added the cubes with the matrix object. So now let's add the explosion. Let me stop this and switch the layout to this one. And we need to see the logo. So we're going to create the explosion using X particles explosion. And I want to create an object that can be the explosion object or the source for the explosion. Uh, so I want that object to be about the same size and same shape as the logo. So let's build that first. Let me hide a few things here. Let's turn off the emitter while we work. And let's turn off the matrix. And here is the logo. Let me twirl that down. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take this logo. Um, I don't need to see that one. So let me hide the visibility of the gravity uh, modifier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an edge from this logo. So I already have it selected there, but let me reselect that so you can see how I do that. And uh, the easiest way to select this is with a loop selection. So U, L, and if I turn off, select boundary loop, that's the one I want. I also want the one for the two dots. So let's go a little closer, hold down shift and select that one. And then let's select this one as well. Hold on shift. So now that I have that, I want to use the command edge to spline. So mesh command edge to spline. So now we have a spline created from that. Let's look at this in the top view. So we can't see the spline because it's the same size as the logo. But what I want to do, I want this spline to be a little bit bigger. Now, if I simply just scale this up like this, it doesn't do it. I want it to be proportional on all sides. So let's undo that. And instead, let's do this. Let's hide the logo. And we can use this tool. Under Spline, we have Create Outline. So if I click and drag now, it kind of works. Uh, the bottom part of the logo is expanded, but the top parts, the two dots, they actually get smaller. So that doesn't quite work. But we can fix that if we go into Point Mode, and then I can select these dots and these dots or all the points. So let me get the selection tool. Uh, nine is the shortcut and let's select all these points. Make sure you grab all of them. I'm gonna hold down shift and select these as well. So now what I can do is if I right click and I can just do reverse that sequence. So now uh, the sequence of, the, of those points is reversed. And when we go back and use the same tool as before, we can see the latest tool in this drop down. So create outline. See now is working the way I want. I'm going to undo that because um, I want to use um, the tools down here. I want to create a new object. I want to create a brand new spline 
and then five is too much, two should be fine. Okay, and there you have it. So it created a new spline for us, and uh, it's the bottom one here. I can actually delete this one. This is the original one. I don't need it. So now we have this new spline. There's one little problem, though. We have some overlapping points. So let's just delete those. And the selection tool again, just going to delete these points, select them, and then hit the backspace key. It doesn't matter that it looks like this. We're not going to see this object. We're just going to use it as an explosion source. So I'm going to use the sweep object. So a sweep object needs a profile and an outline spline. So let's get a profile spline. I'm going to use the end side. Drag that into the sweep. And I'm going to call that one profile. And I'm going to take this one. I'm going to call that one outline. Outline. And this profile is very big, so let's reduce this size to, say, 15. And, uh, well, there's something there. Let's go to the perspective view, F1. And because we drew the spline, the profile spline, in the top view, uh, it's not correct. We need to change the plane from XZ to XY, and there's our shape. Now, by no means does this look good, but remember, we're not going to use this as is, just as an explosion object. We won't actually see it. So let me call this sweep, sweep, explosion. And uh, let's make a few changes, though. Um, I want to make the outline spline a little bit more irregular. And let me hide this for a second. And we can do that by simply adding a distorter to this. Uh, so hold down shift and add a displacer. I said distorter, I meant displacer. And in the displacer, I'm just gonna go to the shading tab and add a noise to this. And we can see that it's working. Let's go back to the object tab. Um, 110 I think is good, but I will change the direction. Instead of vertex normal, I'm going to set this to a planar, and X plus is good. So we have this kind of distortion going on, so it's just right and left. And I'm going to call this uh, Displacer X. And then let's make a copy of this. Place that underneath. We're going to call that Displacer Y. I think you know what I'm going to do now. Just going to go to the orientation and change that to plus Y. So now we have, now it's distorted in two different directions. And I think I'm going to, just going to up the height a little bit. We may have to adjust this. Okay, so let's take a look at this now and see what we have. So the reason that I'm displacing it is that as the explosion happens, I just want, I don't want it to be, too even. I want to have some unevenness as the flames shoot up. Uh, so the displacers help with that. Another thing that's going to help is if we have a little bit of animation, a little bit of movement on this, so it's not stationary. And an easy way to do that is to just add Cinema 4D tags and a vibrate tag. And in the vibrate tag, just going to enable rotation and maybe reduce this to 15, say 15, 15. These are all values that you know, doesn't make a difference, that much of a difference. It's just want to have a little bit of movement. So if we play this back now, you can see that we have, we have some movement going on. So, that is good. Now, you can see actually on the logo, I have a few things here because uh, this is from uh, an older scene. Uh, let me delete these tags. We're going to add this later on. This is an Explosion Collider tab, and we don't need this one either. So let me clean this up. So that's good. So what are we going to do next? Well, we're going to add the Explosion. 
Um, so we don't actually need to see this object anymore. We just wanted to use it as an explosion source. Uh, but I do want to put that in a null. So let me bring that down. Call this one explosion uh, group. And let's put all these guys, put all these guys in there. And now I can just simply turn this off. We don't need to see it. So instead, let's look at the logo. Okay, so how do we add the explosion? Well, we need to add X particles. Actually, let's do this. Let's add a system. Let's add a whole system, XP system. And let's call this one XP system explosion. And the system comes with an emitter. We don't need an emitter because we, we're going to use our... Uh, the shape we just created as the source for the explosion. So if we press play now, nothing is going to happen because explosion doesn't have anything to work with. And I haven't actually even added the explosion yet. So let's do that first. Dynamics, explosion effects. And now we have the bounding box. So this is the explosion domain and anything that you work with that's going to work with explosion needs to be inside of this box. And we have a grid in the background and this is the, the voxel size. Uh, so essentially the smaller those are the more details you have in your explosion. Uh, it's also slower to work with. So for now let's turn this up. Let's set this to say six as we do our testing and in fact I want to make sure that this box is a little higher up. So let's move that up. Let's move that up. Make sure that we're not clipping anything. And uh, that should be fine. And then even with that object, nothing's going to happen because Explosion doesn't have a source yet. So the way we add a source is to go to our Explosion. We can do the sweep explosion and we right click and we say X particles tags and XP explosion source. So now that we play this back, we have an explosion. So I'm actually going to hide the logo and let's zoom in here a little bit. Let's play that back again. Good. So this explosion, we have to time it with the rest of the animation later on. But I'd like to set up the, the main look of this right at the beginning of the timeline, just because it's faster to work that way. Uh, so I'm going to make a few changes here. If I go to the explosion tag, we have smoke, heat, fuel, curl, and pressure. And I'm going to keyframe these values. Um, so on this frame, I am going to have smoke 0, heat 0, fuel 0, pressure 0. Curl doesn't matter. I'm just going to leave that as is 30%. But let's set a keyframe for all these. So smoke, heat, fuel, and pressure. Now we're going to set up the animation here first to see okay, what looks good, what doesn't look good, and tweak it. And then we can simply move all these keyframes to where they should be. They should be somewhere around 90 if we time it up with the rest of the animation. Okay, so from zero, let's go forward a few frames, say uh, seven. I'm going to add smoke. This doesn't normally come with smoke. Uh, smoke is usually generated from the burning of fuel, but I'm going to add some smoke to this from the get-go. So I'm going to set 100 for smoke and heat. I'm going to do 100 keyframe, fuel 100 keyframe, and then pressure 100. I'm going to set up the pressure to 100%. Normally that is set to 10. The higher the number, the more of a violent explosion blast you're going to get. And I want a fairly uh, violent blast here. So that is good. Uh, so it's going to ramp up to this and then go forward, say, to 15. And then I'm going to set all these values to zero. So smoke 
zero keyframe, heat, zero keyframe, fuel, zero keyframe, and then pressure, zero keyframe. So let's see what we get. Okay, so we have this, and then it's not going to continue burning. It's going to just going to be a blast. So I think that looks quite good. Now I'm going to make a few adjustments also in the explosion effect. So if I go into the explosion effects here, and not under the solver tab, but the simulation tab, we have a few things. I'm going to leave sim scale at 100% and sim speed at 100%. We're going to play with sim speed a little bit later. We're going to make a slow-mo of this. Um, but for now, let's leave it alone. Now we have gravity. We have smoke buoyancy, heat buoyancy, fuel buoyancy. And then we have a gravity slider. And the gravity slider basically controls both the, uh, the smoke, heat, and fuel buoyancy. And it's a little counterintuitive. You would expect it being gravity that if we lower this, that with less gravity, it would rise faster. But in fact, it doesn't. It's the opposite. If you want something to rise really quickly, bring up that value to a much higher amount. So now it's going to rise a lot quicker. Now I'm going to set this to 15. And I'm going to leave vorticity and the vorticity radius as R. That's the curl. That's the curl noise that you have inside of the explosion. Um, but notice right now that all we have is smoke. And I added extra smoke. Now, there's one thing that we can do to counteract that. And if I go in to the burning section here, and I'm going to leave burning model to chemical. That's good. And the burn rate to 0.2. That's fine. Uh, but at the get-go, we have a ignition heat of zero. The max heat we can generate is one. But the ignition heat right now is zero. But I'm going to increase this to 0.85. So that's going to be a lot hotter when it blasts off. So let's take a look at that just to see what we get. See, now we have a different color indicating we have a lot more heat as we're starting. And this is exactly what I want. So if I take a look at all this with the logo, let's unhide that. And let's play that back again from a different angle. We're going to have the explosion and it's going to lift off. And then somewhere around here, where the logo is getting engulfed in the flames and the fire and the smoke and all those all those good things i want to start a slowdown uh, so i'm going to ramp down the speed and then come to a complete stop but i'm not going to do that yet i'm going to wait until we have it placed in the right location uh, with the rest of the animation and i happen to know that the rest of the animation uh, the impact point is going to be around 90. So I'm just going to move all these keyframes to frame 90. So the easiest way to do that is to, if we go into the tag, um, if we right click on any of these values, say animation, show track. And here is the track. Right now we are only seeing this timeline. If we want to see the entire timeline, uh, Alt H. It's going to let you zoom out. So let's go to frame 90. And then let's take these and place the main impact point right there. So now if I enable the other objects, the other objects being the matrix, and then we need the emitter as well. And then we play this back. Hopefully the timing is correct. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. OK. 
Okay, it's getting closer. And the attack is about to begin. And when it reaches the logo, we're going to have an explosion. And there's the explosion. If I go frame by frame, and it's going to rise up. And, and now we're back to zero. Now, so first, first of all, I want to have the logo react to this explosion. So I'm going to add a tag to the logo. I can right click X particles tags and I can say XP explosion FX collider. So let's do that. So now I want to time this. Remember I said I wanted to time it, but I wanted to wait until we're at the right spot in the animation. And I'm just going to go forward, say one, two, three frames. And then I'm going to go to the explosion effects object. And the way we do the slow down is by using the sim speed here. So I'm going to set a keyframe at 100% on frame 101. And now I'm going to go one, two, three frames. And then I am going to set a sim speed of 10% keyframe. And then, well, it's all up to you. Uh, perhaps a second or so uh, longer would probably look better. It just takes a little longer here to render. So let's go to one, say, 135. So it doesn't look good now because we are slowing down the explosion, but the deformation of this plane is still happening. But we're going to time these up so that they actually uh, work with the same sim speed. And I'll show you just one second. So let's set this sim speed down to zero and then another keyframe. So now this is keyframed to go from 100% down to 10 pretty quickly and then slowly it's going to go down to zero. And I want to time this sit, uh, excuse me, this sim speed, uh, I want to time that to the emitter that controls the deformation on the cloth plane. And it's really easy to do. We will use Expressor, but it's really simple Expressor. So if I right click here and I say Expressions, Set Driver, and then I can go back to the emitter, and under the object tab, we have something called retiming. And notice that it's also based on percent. So this is going to work without a hitch. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say expressions set driven absolute. And now that you do that, you, we have an expression, little expression icon indicating that this is driven by something. And we also have an expression uh, tag. So let's double click that and see what happened. Uh, we have the sim speed for the explosion going into a range mapper and then that's piped into the retiming of the emitter. And we don't really need the range mapper in this case uh, because they're both based on percentage, but we can keep it in. Let's close this and then let's rewind and let's play this again. So, with any luck, things are going to work out now. Okay, I wish you were faster, but it's not. We need some elevator music. Okay, okay, getting closer. Okay, the moment of truth. Last off, it's gonna rise soon. It's gonna it's gonna slow down, and the rest of the animation is gonna slow down as well. And yes, okay. So that is working. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cache this, and then we'll we'll texture this. So, uh, go to other objects and then 
let's get a cache xp cache and external files and uh, let me just build this cache before i build the cache though uh, let me go back into the explosion effects so right now we're using a voxel size of six now i i said that we wanted to change this later on um, and i'm gonna set this down to i think two is gonna be fine um, in the original example i had it set down to 0 0.8 uh, but that's a lot slower to to cache uh, so for the sake of speed i think two is gonna be fine and you get the idea uh, okay so let's go back to the cache um, here it is and let me build this and i'll be back when this is cached okay so it is cached and it was pretty quick to set up so we should be able to scrub the timeline and we can and here is the explosion so the camera angle that i want to have for this shot would be something like that in the original example that i showed you i used one of the presets and i tweaked that preset um, but i want to show you how to set up um, just a basic fire and smoke material from scratch and i'll show you the preset i used later on as well so let's just create uh let's do just an object material let's call this fire uh, smoke simple and let's just put that on the explosion object and then let's switch this layout let's go to the cycles layout and i'm gonna need some more space here it's a little cramped on this recording monitor. Okay, so if we hit uh, play now, we just see a box. Um, we are not gonna use the surface. Uh, we're gonna use the volume and the principle B SDF doesn't work with this. So let's say goodbye to you. What we need is we need a shader. Uh, we need, actually we need texture point density texture and when you use a point density texture with the explosion effects you want to turn off this normalized checkbox and uh, let's tell this point density texture what we're working with so let's drag the effects explosion in there and we also need to tell it what the channel uh, we should work with so in color Let's set this. We're going to work with burn and smoke, but we have to set them up individually. So let's start with smoke. And for this to work, we also need shader, a volume scatter. Okay, so let's take the density, pipe that into density here, and then we pipe the volume into the volume of our logo. And although faint, we have some smoke now we don't have any control over the density directly in this node but we can just add a math node converter math put that in between and then instead of add let's set that to multiply and then let's up this value to say 50 so now we have smoke And if you increase the density, you're going to have thicker smoke and so on. Now we could add some color to this, uh, say for example, that we add converter, a color ramp, and then we can pipe that into the color of the volume scatter. And then we could they change this to, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe a purple. So we get some color. However, it doesn't give us thick smoke. This way it's not going to give us thick colored smoke. 
Uh, so if we want to have thicker smoke, we need to add an absorption to this. So let's do that. Let's add um, a texture, uh, or I should say shader, and volume absorption. And I want to pipe in the same density here. So same density. And I am going to add this color to the volume absorption. And I need to add these, the volume scatter and the volume absorption together. And the way we do that is by using another shader. We need an add shader. And the add shader is going to add both values on top of each other. So let's do that. And let's bring that into the volume. And now we have thick colored smoke. Now we may not want to have this type of color, but say that I uh, and bring this to say like a more bluish tint, say something like that. And if we want to make this a little darker, we could make this a little darker as well. So something like that. So now that is the base for for the smoke. Now we also want to add uh, the fire. So I can take this point density texture and I can control drag that down. And instead of the effects smoke, we can add the burn. And I'm going to pipe the density into an emission node. So shader, emission. And do that and then drag that now into the volume here. So now instead of the smoke, we now have the burn. And we can increase, um, actually, I, I piped it the wrong way. I wanted this one. So I'm going to unpipe that and bring this one in there. And now I can simply increase the strength of the emission. And say that we want to colorize this now, for example, uh, we can bring in a, a, a color ramp again. Put that in between and then say we make more of a fiery look. So then maybe we make this like a bright orange yellow and then control drag another one here. Make this one a little bit more orange. And then we can do maybe some reddish in there. deeper orange something like that and now you can play with this and you get a different look uh, and you can make it hotter or colder so so now how do we add these two together well we need to use another add shader so if I add one more a shader add and I take the smoke and then I take the burn and then I pipe this one into the volume. Now I have both of them. Uh, now, although I don't really see uh, a lot of the fire, so let's see what's going on. Ah, I see what's going on and this happens a lot. Um, when you move to different nodes, a lot of times the cursor is still inside of a field. Uh, and then you don't get what you think because you type, typed in a new value. So if I set this up to say 40, now we are getting our effect back. So now we could tweak this uh, to our heart's content. Uh, maybe I wanted this a little brighter. Um, I can pull this one in a little bit. Uh, and then we could go and we can make this more heavy on the absorption if we want to say that we may bring another one in there and I can make this really dark. So we'll bring more of that black in there, for example. And these are these values values are fed by the explosion effects and the values that we've piped in. So uh, if we change values in the explosion, 
you know, we will get a different result. But this is a pretty quick and easy way to get a fire and smoke material. And you can spend a lot of time in here and just tweak. And it's a ton of fun. Um, I want to show you the material that I used in the end. Um, and the one I used, if I go to create cycles 40 volume, and then I used this one. Uh, effects smoke and fire heavy absorption. So if I replace this material now, we're going to get that one. And th the reason I used, and I tweaked the colors a little bit on this one and some of the values, but the reason I chose this one is because you have uh, a lot of varying, you have the dark, the absorption, the dark spots here, and it looks nice com combined with the, the hot spots from the fire. Uh, so that's what I used. So if I just increase this and put a final camera angle on this, Now, obviously, I would have to reframe this shot a little bit and probably um, change a few things with the cloth simulation. Uh, it was set up to be a much wider shot, not for the impact, uh, but I will go back and tweak that. But this is the general idea. So this is the final shot. And you can download all the source files that I used in the original project on velocitypeak.com. And you'll find all those details below this video. And, uh, well, thank you for sticking around, and I'll see you next time.